question is what accounts for the rise in the use of liquid de-icers? Well, I'm going to give you my opinion based on my particular vantage point, which is as a chemist who studies how de-icing chemicals work. Now, it's actually kind of an interesting question because if we think about it for a little bit, there are some intuitive reasons to think that liquid de-icers might actually not work very well. So it's interesting to think about why they actually work as well as they do. So first, let's just define what we mean by a liquid de-icer. A liquid de-icer is nothing more than a dry de-icer that we've dissolved in water. So you take rock salt, you take calcium chloride prills, you dissolve them in water, now you've got a liquid de-icer. Now the thing is, whenever we dissolve a de-icer in water, we are of course diluting it. And when we dilute the de-icer, we are also diluting its ice melting power. Now this gets us into an area of frequent misunderstanding and confusion. People often get confused because the way de-icers work is by lowering the freezing point of water. And so people will get confused about the relationship between the freezing point of a brine and how well it works as a de-icer. Now let me show you an example of that. What you see right here is a freezing point curve for a liquid calcium chloride de-icer. And note that as I go from left to right across my freezing point curve, what we're looking at is how the freezing point of that brine changes as I get more and more calcium chloride content. And note that the minimum freezing point that we get in liquid calcium chloride is at a concentration of 30%. That's what we call the eutectic. The eutectic is the particular composition of a brine that has the lowest freezing point. Now, people will often look at a curve like this and they'll say, aha, because that brine has got the lowest freezing point at 30% calcium chloride, that must be the concentration I want to use to get the most ice melting power. Well, is that actually the case? Let's take a look and see. So what I've done for you is I've, I've run some tests where I measured the ice melting capacity of liquid calcium chloride at different calcium chloride concentrations. And you see the result of that in this graph. Now what I want you to notice is that the amount of ice melting that we get at 30% calcium chloride at that eutectic value is not the highest amount of ice melting. In fact, the highest amount of ice melting is with the brine that's got the highest content of calcium chloride. And as we progressively dilute the calcium chloride, note that we steadily lose ice melting capacity. So this raises a really good question. Why on earth would we ever want to use a liquid de-icer? Because as we just saw, liquid de-icers are always going to have less ice melting capacity than the corresponding dry chemical. In a liquid de-icer, we are diluting the chemical, therefore we are also diluting its ice melting power. Every bit of water that we add to a de-icer is now that much less ice it is able to melt. So why on earth would we want to do that? Why do we want to pay to have a diluted product? The answer is increased efficiency. We pay a price by losing a little bit of ice melting capacity, but what we gain from that is the ability to apply that chemical in a more efficient way and lower our overall application rates. It turns out that liquids are a very good medium to distribute and apply the de-icing chemical that allows us to reduce our overall application rates. And this is important because it allows us both to minimize our costs and also to minimize our environmental impact because we always want to put down as little chemical as possible to get the job done.